Hi, my name is Camilla Benko, and I make books for kids. You might know some of the characters in my stories. Characters like Claire and Sophie, Senna and Nett. Today, I want to talk to you about one character in particular, Claire. Claire is the main character in my series, The Unicorn Quest. Tell us about your character. The series starts the summer between Claire's fifth and sixth grades when she and her older sister have to help clean out the mansion of their recently deceased great aunt. Claire and her sister, Sophie, find a lot of cool and unusual objects in the house, but the most unusual thing they find is a ladder in a fireplace. Sophie immediately climbs up, but it's much harder for Claire to put her foot on the first rung. That's because Claire is scared of practically everything. The dark, heights, feeling left out, getting into trouble, losing her sister. But even though she's scared of things that other people might find silly, Claire still chooses to face all of these things anyway. And that's what makes her equally brave, and maybe even more brave than Sophie. Honestly, I'm similar to Claire in a lot of ways. I'm scared of a lot of things most people aren't afraid of, like centipedes. And of course, we share having thick curly hair that doesn't travel so well when camping or going on quests. But we're different too. Claire is a super talented artist, and while I love to draw, I would never in a million years say I'm any good at it. How did you come up with this character? When I first started thinking about the Unicorn Quest, I knew I wanted to write from the point of view of an unexpected protagonist, the little, quieter sister, who is a bit of an introvert and whose most powerful strength is observing and listening. Kind of like my own little sister, Gabriella, and kind of like me too. Even though I'm not a little sister, a lot of Claire's emotions are inspired from my time hanging out with the older kids in my neighborhood. They were all many years older than me, which meant they could read long books that I couldn't and play Monopoly, which is very hard to play when you're only five years old and are just starting to learn the basics of addition and subtraction. One hot summer day, we were all hanging out on my porch, and I was so excited that for once we were at my house. But then, the oldest stood up and the others followed. Where are you going? I asked. And they all said it was just too hot out and they were going home to their air conditioners. I couldn't let that happen. And so I tried desperately to come up with something that would make them stay. I blurted out, someone broke into my room last night. That got their attention. With all eyes on me, I quickly made up a story about a flying horse who'd burst into my room and taking me to a magical world called Diamond Land. A world not just of flying horses, but where all sorts of flying creatures lived. The older kids were hooked. The stories about Diamond Land that I used to tell my neighbors and eventually my own little sister were the very beginning of the world at the end of the ladder and of Claire's own adventures. What made you want to become a creator of books? I wanted to create books because books were my most loyal friends growing up. I have a learning difference, and that makes understanding people's facial expressions difficult. And before I trained in nonverbal communication, I had a hard time understanding the world around me. But books and their emotion-filled characters were a lifeline for me. And I always want to make sure that there are plenty of lifelines out there for all kids, no matter their background. When I was 11 years old, I was reading a book in my great aunt's yard. And for some reason, I was struck by the sudden realization that someone, somewhere, had read the story I was holding in my hands and had decided that it should become a book, that it should be a story for kids like me to read. I had no idea what that job was called, but I began to research it. I eventually learned the word, publisher. And then I dug in a little more and found another word, editor. From then on, everything I chose to do in school, from sixth grade all the way through college, was with the thought that one day I would be a children's book editor. But I never thought I would actually become a writer. I didn't think I had any ideas that could take up more than 10 pages. But when I became a children's book editor and I began to work with authors, the process of writing a book became a little less mysterious and I realized that books don't come out perfectly formed. And so, by watching others, I was inspired to open up a blank Word document and start typing. If you found a whale in your bathtub, what would you do? I would immediately pull out a jar of shrinking violet dust and shrink myself down to three centimeters because I assumed that for a whale to be in my bathtub, it had to be very tiny. 
then I would climb onto its back and ride the whale to a secret, tiny, underwater world where mermaids and Nessie coexist.